Today, we're looking at configuring supersedence for Win32 applications within Microsoft Intune. If you come from a configuration manager world, you probably are quite familiar with this concept. However, it's been a highly requested feature within Intune. So what is supersedence? Well, supersedence allows us to tackle a couple of really common application deployment methods. And really that is one, update. So how do we update an application to a newer version? And secondly, how can we replace applications? So for example, in the update model here, we can take a Win32 application, maybe we have our app version one, and we wanna update that to our application version two. And then in replace, we can have a Win32 app, and we wanna replace that with an entirely new Win32 app. So for example, you might have conferencing tool one, and you wanna replace that with conferencing tool Two. I'm not going to name any technology names here. I don't want to start a war in the comments, but you can probably guess my recommendation for conferencing tools. So in this video, we're going to be looking at configuring supersedence within Intune, and we're going to look at the end user experience of actually updating an application. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so we're now here inside the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center looking at Intune. So let's get this party started on how we can configure supersedence. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead on the left-hand side and choose apps, and then we're gonna do Windows, because well, Win32 apps is for Windows. And we can see here that, you know, like any old cooking show, I've got some of the ingredients prepared. And we have two applications that are, we're gonna focus this video on. So we've got 7-Zip1604 and 7-Zip19. And if you're thinking right now, well, hang on, how do I create a Win32 app? Because I'm not gonna go through it in this video. Well, I'll put a link on the screen somewhere or in the description. And I actually made a video all around creating Win32 applications within Intune. So if you wanna make sure that you know how to do that, go check that video out, but in here, we're just gonna look at configuring the supersedent site. So our scenario is we're gonna go from the 7-zip version 16 to the 7-zip version 19. But before we do that, I'm just gonna show you a couple of things in the application. So from 7-zip 16, you know, we've got all the normal stuff configured, you know, version, logo, all that kind of good stuff. We also have an install and an uninstall command. Of course, it's always best practice to have these both set up, but when it comes to supersedence, it is important to know, does your application just easily in place upgrade or do you need to uninstall the application first and then install the newer version? So I have both of those configured. The other thing for both applications is under the detection rules, I'm using MSI, and then I've been very specific about the product version. You know, if you have this old version, I wanna make sure that we can detect that and then detect that we're updating this to a newer version. So we can see that we have that. If we go back to the Windows apps under 7-zip 19, properties again, let's just rock down here. If we go back to detection rules, we can see on here, Again, I've been very specific with the product version that is gonna be 19. So at this point, we have both applications. We have the older app that's been, in this case, assigned and deployed out to our fleet of laptops or desktops. And now we wanna get everyone updated to the version 19. So let's dive into that 7-zip 19 application. Let's go back to properties. And then from here, if we scroll all the way down, we can now see that we got this supersedence and it is in preview right now. So, you know, it's in public preview, so everyone can try this out. Hopefully it doesn't change too much when it goes into general availability, but if it does, I'll probably cover that in another video. We can also see right now that I haven't deployed this. There's no assignments for this application. So for supersedence, let's just go ahead and select edit. And now you can see a fantastic paragraph talking all around supersedence. So for example, here we can select which app's gonna be updated or replaced, whether or not we wanna uninstall the previous version or application, but then we have this learn more. And that brings you to this fantastic documentation. I'm not gonna drain all the documentation here, but I do wanna cover this supersedence behavior because I think this is important. And 
you're probably going to have a few questions on it. So there's three scenarios. So scenario one, and I'll go through this as quick as I can, is the superseded app is installed on the device already. And we've selected that we want to uninstall the previous version. So everything happens kind of as we would expect. The superseded app will get uninstalled from the device before then installing the new superseding app. But it does note here that even if you haven't targeted the superseded app as uninstalled to the user or the workstation, it's still going to go ahead and be uninstalled for you. And then in the company portal, you're going to see the superseding and the superseded application. But, and this is good news, this is what we want, you're only, or the user, is only going to be able to install the superseding application, so the new application that you're trying to deploy. And if they go ahead and try install the old version or old application, it's just not going to work for them. And then scenario two is, again, the superseded app is installed on the workstation, but we're going to go ahead and not uninstall the previous version. And this is where it's really important to understand the behavior of your application. So if you choose this, you want to make sure that you know that when you install the new version, there's just going to you know, install right on top of the old one and you don't have to uninstall it. So right here, it's going to use the behavior of the superseding apps installer. And then again, in the company portal, you're going to see the superseding and the superseded application, they are only going to be able to install the superseded application. And on the third scenario, the superseded app does not exist on the device, and therefore superseding application, the new application, is just going to be installed, and only the new app is going to be displayed in company portal. So those are the you know, three main behaviors, and they're pretty much as you would expect. So let's go ahead and go back to you know, the supersedence here in Intune, and let's get this going. So first of all, you're just gonna go ahead and hit add. And then from add, you can search all of your applications. So again, 7-zip19 is our superseding application. This is our end state, but we wanna supersede the version 16. So let's just go ahead and select that. And now we can see that that's selected down here in the add apps. And let's just select, select. And now that we've chosen this 7-zip16, uh, we can go ahead on the right-hand side and choose whether or not we want to uninstall, yes or no. I'm going to just choose yes for this demonstration. Um, but again, this is where you really need to know the behavior of your application. Of course, if I'm not happy with this, I could go ahead and remove it as well. So let's just go ahead and go to review now and save. And that's it. We've got supersedence set up, but nothing happens now if you haven't obviously got any assignments to the applications. Like I don't, I don't have any assignments, so it's not going to go start uninstalling the old app uh, or anything funky like that. So what we want to do is we now want to add an assignment. So to do that, I'm just going to go edit on the assignments. And then we're going to go, you could do this as required. You know, we want to force uninstall the old application, the old 7-zip, and install the new 7-zip. Or you can do available. And just to make this demo a little bit easier, I'm just going to select the available, add a group. And of course, you want to add a you know, scoped group here. Be logical about this. I'm just going to type in Intune and deploy it to my Intune applications available group and hit select. And now, of course, you can change any of the kind of delivery and deployment methods. So, you know, do you want to show all totes notifications? Do you want any delivery optimization? Or when do you want it to be deployed? I'm just going to choose as soon as possible and we'll go from there. So let's just hit review and save and then hit save again. Great. And at this point now, we're going to supersede the old 7-zip with the new on version 19 and we're going to deploy this as available. So let's go ahead and jump over to the client and have a look at what this looks like. Okay, so we're now here in a Windows 10 client, and in our world, as we saw, I've assigned both applications to my user. So we have right now inside the company portal, as we saw, is the 7-zip-1604, and we have the 7-zip-19. And we can see here that the 1604 is installed. We can also look at 
add and remove programs. We can see the 1604 version is there. And I could also bring up 7-zip as well. And then if we just went to about 7-zip, we can see the 16 version is here. So at this point then, to really get this to work out, and it could have been required, but as we're doing available, I can just go here into this new 7-zip version and then go ahead and just select install. And now at this point, we're gonna start seeing as a user, because I left them open, all the kind of toast notifications popping up on what's happening. And because we chose that we wanna uninstall the old version of this application, install the new, we're gonna get toast notifications showing us through that. So it's gonna tell us that this new application is gonna be downloaded. And then we're gonna start replacing 7-zip 16 with 7-zip 19. Then it's gonna inform us that we've successfully uninstalled the old application. And then at the end of it, we've installed the new. And at that point, we can see that everything has been successfully installed as it's available. I could go ahead and reinstall it if I want to as well. And now if we go ahead and look at the 7-zip file manager here, and we go to help and about, we can now see that we're on version 19. So that's exactly what we wanted to see, and this worked perfectly. It uninstalled the old app and installed the new one. And I can obviously go and check that if we go to appwiz.cpl here, and we go ahead and refresh. We can now see the 16 version is gone, and we've only got that 19. But as we said earlier, even though that's been installed, we can still see both versions in here, but the old version's now not gonna install over the top. So if I clicked into 7-zip16, for example, and I hit install, this isn't gonna go ahead and do that same thing. So once it's checked in here, we're gonna see that nothing's gonna happen. In the company portal, it's just come back to install, and, and we're done. So that's all there is to it when it comes to supersedence within Intune. Of course, they recommend, again, read the documentation because some fantastic scenarios and explanations there. And if you really enjoyed this video and you want to see more Intune videos, check out my playlist where you can see more about installing and creating Win32 apps to Windows Autopilot. And make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time for another video.